Everybody, it's Erin Reed, and we are back at Creativation 2024. We are walking the showroom floor and hitting up as many booths as we can today. And we're going to start off with Maker Flow. They are doing a UV resin, which is amazing. Now, just as a heads up, Creativation is a conference that is all about the arts and crafts industry. So if you are a buyer, a seller, or a content creator like myself, we call them creative professionals or a CP, that's what I am. That is who has paid to be a member of this organization and who is at this trade show. So this is not, you're not coming here to buy a product and bring it home and do that craft. We're talking about Michaels is here to buy the product or to get an order to put into their stores or a mom and pop craft store or Dick Blick or Jerry's Artorama. That is who is here in the showroom floor. And so all of the manufacturers are here showing off their products and then people like me get to demonstrate them or try them out and convince you guys that it is so amazing and you have to have that cool thing. So let's start off with some UV resin and let's play and have some fun. All right, let's check this out. So come on, let's go over and we're gonna, she's just getting started and let's hear what the whole spiel is about. Hello. So can you tell us a little bit about what UV resin is all about? And I think I might be sticking my mic closer to you so people have an easier time. Absolutely. Hearing you. Let me UV get this. resin is actually super easy to use for anyone who's tried like two part epoxy before. You know that it can be a little bit of a struggle, like mixing the epoxy, waiting for it to cure correctly, waiting days sometimes for it to cure. Uh, UV resin is very swift and easy to use. Uh, there's no mixing involved. And you pour it directly from the bottle. Uh, we're about to make a really cool flower scene. Cool. You can include glitter, color, uh, anything really. Like there's a lot of fun things you can do with UV resin. All right. So, so could we tag along with what you're making over here and live vicariously through you? Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Now that you've got your tape, you've got your everything ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and give you a glove. Would you like one or two? Uh, whatever you think I need is fine. At least one. Okay. So go. why the glove? Uh, personal protective equipment is important with any kind of resin, so we want to encourage you to at least wear gloves. We're in a very open atmosphere here, otherwise I'd say a resp uh, respirator too if you're in a oh. smaller space. Okay. Yeah. Just so, because of the, the resin chemicals, you'll smell it a little bit while it's curing. Okay. Sometimes people have reactions to resin, so we'd rather be safe than have you with a reaction. That's okay. All. <laughs> okay. Is, I mean, even out of the bottle, is that a safe thing to touch with your bare hands? Or you still would say you, I wouldn't recommend it, yeah. <laughs> okay. You definitely want to use gloves. Um, okay. Sometimes I, I uh, go a little more than I should, and I'll do it, but you know what I mean? It's better to be safe than sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. And is this what one of the little items looks like when it's all said and done? Yeah, that's a little snail so right there. <laughs> so adorable. Look at that. All right, but we're doing a little we're charm a, and a heart? Yeah, we're making either a necklace Fabulous. or a keychain, whichever she'd prefer. Fabulous. So you want to grab your resin. Go and take the little bit off there for me, too. It'll twist right off. Excellent. We're going to fill that bowl about a third of the way, okay? No. So you don't want to pour it directly into the charm itself? Not yet, because right now we're going to mix a glittery background. Oh. So with these ones, we're technically making like a flower sandwich. So we'll have a glitter or a clear background, the flower has that meat in the middle, and then a final top coat to really gloss everything over, make it nice and smooth. Very cool. So now that you've got that poured out, go ahead and put some glitter into your cup. Uh, you can use either the sift side or the spoon side, however glitter you want to do. The only important thing to consider is you want it to still have good fluidity when you're stirring it. That way the, the light can cure it. Is there too much mixing? Is this going to harden if you mix too much? So what's nice is because it's not actually activated by the mixing process, it's activated by the UV light. Oh, okay. So you have a little bit more cure time as long as you're not in the, uh, the direct sunlight, of course. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> now I'm going to use the same color as you. Uh, let's go ahead and mix our colors. Now as long as, I would use the pointy end, just a little bit easier to mix. And then what you want to do is make sure it still moves a little bit. You want to have some fluidity. That way the UV light can cure as it's going through yeah, the item. Do you think I need more than this? I think that that looks pretty good. What okay. I usually do is I'll go ahead and just kind of pull from the top. See how mine's a little clumpy? Yep. That's about as much as you'll want to go. Any clumpier than that, it's not going to okay. cure. Okay, that's good. So there is kind of an eyeball ratio to what you're wanting. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, with resin, I want to say it can't be more than like 6% of the actual mixture. So I try not to go more than at least like where it won't lose it, its fluid motion. Got it, got it. <laughs> awesome. Now let's go ahead and take this little bowl. We're going to pour it into our bezel. You don't need to use all of the resin that you mixed, just enough to make a thin layer in the background. Because again, this is just that bottom layer of our sandwich. 
So where can somebody find this product if they're at home and they're wanting to purchase this like right now? Where, where can they find it? Uh, this is actually one of our new products, so it's available on our website. Uh, we have really awesome prices on everything. It starts as a bottle as small as 10 milligrams like this if you just want to try it. And then we have big sizes up to the 500 milligram size if you love it. Wow, <laughs> very cool. Yeah. And then do you also sell the UV lights just to make life easy? And Absolutely. is it makerflow.com? Makerflowcrafts.com. Makerflowcrafts.com. See, I'm glad I asked. <laughs> I would have been like, I can't find it, but you can also do a search. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, what's nice is we also have a kit. So if you're just getting started, the kit has everything you need, including the gloves. Oh, so perfect. So it's got the flashlight, batteries, all of the tools required, uh, even the bezel pieces too, everything that you need. So you, I'm seeing some flowers over oh, here. Yeah. Are these real flowers? Yeah, real pressed flowers. <laughs> cool. But could you use like pieces of plastic in there? Could you I use... I haven't really tried plastic before. You have to keep in mind that the resin heats as it's curing. Okay. So you don't want something that's going to be affected by that heat. Okay. So I've used um, little things like cogs. Um, I've even used actually like taxidermy bugs, things oh, like wow. that. Oh, wow. So what about a paper flower versus a real flower? Would that be okay? You could try it. Okay. Definitely try it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So All right. Now go ahead and make sure that that corner is covered. Do you see the corner edge of your heart? You need a little bit more glitter in there. Oh, yes, I see it. Awesome. So we want to make sure it's nice and even. That way you have a smooth uh, background for your piece. How long can you sit? Uh, basically, you can leave it sitting for as long as you want without uh, the UV light or daylight touching it, and it won't cure. So you have a lot more work time. So with if UV you had to step away for like, oh crap, something happened. Yeah. It's like, oh, my project's not ruined. Yeah, exactly. Just don't do this in the sun. Exactly. Yeah. I took it out. To I'd be a, afraid a of my dog here getting in it. <laughs> yeah, you can always cover it too, like a plastic oh, piece, something smart. like that, Tupperware. Yep, yep. <laughs> Perfect. So now we like the way it looks, right? Beautiful. The first layer, since it's not a whole lot, we're just going to cure for 45 seconds. So I'll go ahead and set our timer. Grab your little flashlight. We're gonna start nice and high like this because we wanna slowly introduce the wattage to the item, okay? Perfect, here we go. Now again, the reason why you're starting up high and then slowly bringing the piece in is you wanna introduce that UV light slowly to the product, that way it doesn't shock the resin. Uh, if you were to start full blast right on the piece, it could be kind of wavy, it could cause shrinkage, uh, it just doesn't make an even cure. So this is kind of be the best way and then you'll end about where my hand is here, okay? Excellent. So why couldn't you not put the flower in now? You could technically, but the flower isn't even. Oh, so okay. we want to have a nice smooth background. That way it's not going to have like little bumps or divots here and there. So does it level itself as you're heating it right? or as you're it's, setting it? It's pretty self-leveling as okay. it pours. Um, once you're curing it, it's not going to move too much. Like once that light starts to hit it, that's, that's pretty much all. You can't really change it at that point. Cool. Awesome. I can see kids loving this. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we do these at our pinner shows too, where we have like ages from, I wanna say five is the youngest person who's worked with it, all the way up to like 84, I think, because we had someone's grandma come out and work with oh, us too. Love it. <laughs> but everyone really has a lot of fun with it. As long as you have a little patience, you're yeah. good to go. <laughs> now that our bottom layer is here, let's give it a little knock to make sure. I usually just tap it. Oh, finger. look, it's hard as a rock. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that is cool. Awesome. Ooh, it's a little weird. Ah. <laughs> Now we're going to take just a little bit of the resin from the bottle. Just put a few drops wherever you'd like your flowers to go. And this is going to act as glue, essentially, for those flowers, OK? Now I'm going to go ahead and just pick a couple fun little flowers, because I did not do my prep work like my friend over there did. I got her set up, but not oh, myself. Oh, I'm loving the blue. <laughs> loving the blue. Right? I mean, Blue's my favorite. Me too. Blue, blue, so I'm going to throw that in there. And I think a little foliage would be nice, right? Yeah. So let's take this little guy here. And I might actually move this around. Put on bottom. Awesome. Oh, so pretty. And then you can always trim as you need to. See how this kind of goes over the edge here? Right. So what I'm going to do is if I, I had time earlier, I could have trimmed the side, but I'm going to cure it as is and then use my scissor like a razor and just uh, trim off that side. Smart, smart, yeah. smart. So there's lots of options with this. Like I said, it's very forgiving. You just kind of need to have a little knowledge of what to do. Got it. Very pretty. Once you have your flowers placed the way you want, you'll use your little wand to really push them down That's against the, the resin. Thing. Okay. They're nice and stuck in place. That is so fun. <laughs> so cool. Oh, and here's, just to show, here's one yes. that's already been done. Look at that. This is, what, this is what we're going for. This is what we're aiming for. What am I for. using to push it down? Uh, the other side of the wand. That you have shimmery on the back side. And the that reason for that is because we want the flowers to lay nice and flat. That way when you go in for your top layer, you're going to have a nice smooth top, just like those completed ones we were looking okay. at. And then if you guys want to see what it looks like without glitter, 
Here's another little example for you. Oh. So that's just the flower with a nice clear background. Very cool. And there's, a, there's a pink version too. Oh, very cool. <laughs> Lots of fun stuff you can do there with these. There are some pretty ones. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing the last step is just pour the resin in and set it and cure it and exactly. boom, done. Well, we're going to cure this layer here because we don't want that flower to rise up. Got it. So once this is cured, we're going to do a flood with the top coat. We'll cure that side. We're going to flip the whole thing upside down and then cure the back side as well just to make sure we got the opposite end of it. Well, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. And then when you're all done, it looks like that. That's beautiful. It's very cool. <laughs> Very fine. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Thank we're you. gonna move on to the next thing. Let me grab my bag. So don't forget my bag. We have all kinds of fun stuff. So let's go see. I think Catherine Cooler is demoing right now. So instead of me going boost to boost, because there's no way I'm gonna get to every single. I've I tried. I've tried my hardest to go to every single booth, but it's not gonna happen this year. So we're gonna do a little bit of cherry picking based on what demos are happening or cool things, and it's not just a booth walkthrough. Then try and get to as many as I can. But I know Catherine Cooler is demoing right now, and she's awesome. We're gonna go see her. She's right through here. And as we're walking through here, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Notions. Right, right. So Notions is a wholesale. I think I have this on the wrong side, so you guys are hearing all my yeah, bag okay, hitting so my mic. So about that. Let's come this way a little bit. So Notions is a wholesale market where if you are a store owner and you want, sorry, I was turning off the other mic so we're not picking up weird stuff. So if you're wanting to pick up a few items from here and there, so for instance, we have DIY Cousin right here. We have over here, we have, like there's Beacon Glue and you're wanting some foam tape, you're wanting some wood shapes. They've got Sizzix, they've got Crafters Workshop in here. They have, I mean, you can come around the corner, Ranger is here. We've got Catherine Pooler items. They have a whole bunch of different items. So if you're a store owner and you're wanting to put in an order of $5 from here, $20 from there, $100 from there, you don't have to go directly to the main manufacturer. Sorry, I got hair on my mouth. Then you can combine it all together through your Notions order and it all gets shipped at the same time, which is fabulous. And Rhonda, she works in a store. How amazing is Notions that you can kind of do a one-stop shop for all of your products? It's really cool, right? So it's just, it really makes life easy. I mean, they even have, you know, all kinds of products. So anything for your craft store, that's what Notions is about. And so Catherine is here in the Notions booth because they carry her products and they also carry the Physics products. So let's jump in. Hi. Hello. May we come in and film a live video and you can give us a little demonstration? Is that cool? Yeah. Hello, hello. Paper and that would be wonderful. Can I pop this over here so people can hear you a little better? Or do you want to pop it on your lanyard? It's just a mic so people can hear you. <laughs> She's like, testing, testing. Mic testing. check, mic yeah, check. Got a Thank you. Okay. One, two. Fabulous. One, two, one, two. Yeah, I got one in my shirt. You got All right. one here. Tell yeah. me when to start. Whenever you're ready. We're live. We're well, hi, everyone. Oh, I'm, I'm blowing on yeah, the mic. Like, <laughs> Good thing I didn't say anything <laughs> secret or private or... Um, <laughs> Sorry, I said inappropriate. I oh, we are we are currently live. We're Hi everyone. The floor. I'm Catherine from Catherine Pooler Designs. Very excited to be here. Erin, you're such a joy. <laughs> Thanks for coming you. over. Absolutely. I'm gonna use the melon ice ink pad. Are your friends familiar with these inks? Uh yes, because uh, I use them all, all the time. time. <laughs> so we're we have a foam pad, they're very squishy. Um juices. Anything or uh, anything that touches the pad, ink is just going to come right out of that pad, and it's going to be inked up. Your finger, your paper, your stamp, all of the above. Your cat, <laughs> your children, your fingers. Uh, I just wiped this up so it's a little damp. That's why my paper's curling. But um, let's do a little direct paper. It's also very humid here today. It is. I feel like my hair is doing weird stuff just because. Yes, of we're just going to take the ink pad and gently. Wipe it across that cardstock. I've done this a bunch of times, so this the ink is coming out of the pad and the pad is becoming more dry, so we're gonna need to re-ink this at some point. But just a couple more swipes and we're gonna get melanized cardstock. It's gonna be a little bit streaky, but it will dry back more smooth. And if you have streaks, you can just very gently take your ink pad and rub it over the surface until you get a more smooth and even look. So do all of your ink pads also have companion re-inkers? Yes, we have re-inkers or ink refills for every single color, yes. Okay, and then we are going to use the new 
jungle textures embossing folder. So we'll add the paper in there, close this up, and run it through the big shot. Woo! Good time. I love that she's standing there. She's like, I got this. I got this. Ready? Oh, so fun. So fun. So much detail. This comes out in May with our new launch. Uh, we're working with Sizzix and we have the May launch coming out. It's vacay mode. So we have the monkey and jungle theme. And we also have the swimmers theme. Where is a swimmer card? Or you want the one with the umbrella? Yeah. So this all comes out in May. And then if you want to make that design pop even more, let's take grass skirt, which is a darker green, yellow, yellow green, and we'll ink blend over the top and that's gonna pick up the texture and make those images pop. That's such a cool technique. I so you can that. ink blend. You can also very lightly swipe your ink pad across the texture. Ooh. Whoa, yeah. Ah. <laughs> so what tool are you using? This is a, blending tool by Sizzix. It comes in a pack with a few other different applicators that can get attached to the end. So it's really, it's quite cool. And then add on a monkey and a sentiment. Here we have another one. Oh, somebody's asking. Um, oh, what is that ink tool? Sorry. Oh, ink all over my fingers. So I just. So that's where your monkey's gonna go. So this is buttercream on the base, then pucker up, ink blend it over the top, and then tiara around the edges. I also did. All these color combos. Love it. And then this is your new stencil that she's trying yeah. to plug back because it's right there. Great. Right? So look at her amazing new stencils that she has through Sizzix. Like, so, so this beautiful. is a four layer stencil that's coming out. And of course, this is all with Catherine Puller inks. Yeah, I love your Of inks. course. I use them all the time. Yay. They're just so fabulous. They're so juicy. We you can do so many size. different things well, with the Catherine Cooler inks. That's 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 they are it. my go-to. They are my go-to. Yeah. Absolute yeah. fan. Thank I you. am loving them. Thank, Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're taking off here in a few minutes. Yes, we are going to get on a plane. Get a, well, have a safe flight home, and you. you've been amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going to come out and give you a hug. Oh, yes. So good to see you. Safe flight. <laughs> She's using my emergency kit. Those that saw my emergency kit, she got one of those. All right, so let's go check out some more boots. Yes. All right, so let's walk around a bit more. So let's see where we're going to go. I feel like I'm just walking. So we've got, well, let's check out over here. We got Sharpie. Now, I did go to a class with Sharpie and it is pretty amazing. So Sharpie, well, this is all the Newell brands of products. So Newell has Sharpie, Papermate, Ball, Exacto, Elmer's, Prismacolor. They have a lot of different brands under one umbrella. So here is Prismacolor right here. Love their pens. Over here we have Papermate. So here we have the cool Papermate, all the pens that go along with those. And then, do they have them? Yes. So, in one of my reels that showed up from one of the days, this was the brand new marker. So I'm just making sure my mic is off. It's not going to go in my pocket. Um, it's like a marker, but it's also like a piece of like paint. It's so cool. And the artist that does the transformers for Hasbro was there and he gave me Optimus Prime. He drew it right there and I got a little Optimus Prime. So these are these new brand new markers. They're called the creative markers by Sharpie. They are brand new on the market. So there's smaller nibs, there's smaller barrels. But then they also have the bigger barrels right there, which are really, really cool. So here we have, just to show you, so here they are. And I believe we're able to color on this. That's what it's looking like, right? So let's come in. So just so you can see, look how amazing this is on here. And I'm gonna go over top of here and look, look how wonderful this coat's over top. Isn't that awesome? And I'm gonna grab the white 
and there's a white in here. So here's the bigger one. And look how the white goes over top of the blue. And it doesn't take very long to dry. Look at over top of here. It is really, really cool. And then just this, guys, you can see all the colors, but I mean, let me hold up the bucket. Just look at all the colors. And it can go on, like, this is like a plastic. Can you guys hear it? It's not paper. This is a plasticky surface. It obviously goes on paper, but they're also putting it on top of, like, so you can label your Rubbermaid things. You can label it goes on glass. So we got to play with these in one of our um, things. So we've got a bullet tip. We've got a brush tip. And they just have oodles of these down here. Don't mind my back. Forget you saw my back. <laughs> so that is the new thing from Sharpie, which is from the Newell brands. And Rubbermaid is part of the Newell. They're all part of the big parent company. That little powwow over there. So since I knew a little bit about the product, decided to demo it himself. Let's go that way. <laughs> I feel like I need to have a better plan for today. But we're jumping around for a few different things. All right, so we are going to be talking to, so E6000, you guys know E6000, amazing, amazing glue, holds fight. Anything, may we film? We're live right now. Right Is there anything new going on with you guys? Well, we have new, it's a brand new adhesive app, which is E6000 Premium. Ooh. Okay, there's no other adhesive on the market like it right now. Um, what it does is we've uh, reformulated to actually um, bond plastics. So as you will see right here. Can you guys hear okay? Sorry, I have my mic. I'm gonna go like this. Just gonna turn the mic on. There we go, just yeah. make sure. The new E6000 Premium will bond ABS, polycarbonates, acrylics, the new um, 3D printing oh, plastics. Nice. See all these materials right here? Again, with the same strength, strength as the original E6000, this is the original E6000 substrate board right here, and this is the new premium substrate board. It is actually out and ready for sale in, um, in a lot of outlets uh, as we speak, but it is brand new from E6000 this year, and will change the market for the music market as far as uh, bonding plastics. Again, no other adhesive like it on the market today. Well, it's fabulous. Thank yeah. you so much. Great stuff. I appreciate it. I mean, All right. Part of New oh. glue. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So Ecstasy Crafts is another one here we have here where they are a distributor. So if you have a company that wants to buy multiple products, they're actually based out of Canada. So if you have a Canadian-based company and you're wanting to put in your orders, Ecstasy Crafts carries a lot, a huge variety of different companies. Now, I'm going to tell you guys a little secret. We got Lisa Horton right there, and I'm not skipping her this year. I promise. I know I screwed that up so bad last year. But we have a scheduled time that we are going to be going to her booth for a dedicated video tomorrow. So I'm not skipping her. I promise we're going to come tomorrow. Now over here, take a look over here. We have this really cool mural going on. So people are coming in. Are you painting right now? I will be. In you there. will be. So there's a mural happening. And where is this going to be donated to? Or is this where is this it's, happening? But this is being donated to the Back Street Cultural Museum in New Orleans. Very cool. Yes. So are you the only one working on this, or are other no, people coming? No, it's a community it's museum. It's a community. Yes, I did the design, and the others are gonna coming in. Come in, and anybody that's walking by, if they want to pick up a brush, we'll yes. direct them on the little things that they probably Great. can do. Whether they want to do something really hard or something really easy, it's all there. I love that. And I love that a piece of art is being donated to some place in the community. Now, what is the organization that's going to? Can you tell us more about that? Um, it's an organization that uh, documents the activities that happen on the back streets, the main streets of Mardi Gras, but then all through the year on the back streets in the neighborhoods, there's an activity that happens all year around with Mardi Gras Indians and baby doll dancers and costumes that everyone's wearing. Yes. Very cool. It's like a year-round party. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's certainly <laughs> well, have, I can't wait to see how this transforms over the next few days because it is so cool. It's very awesome. Oh. And you drew this. This is your design. Yes, yes. yes. It's fabulous. Well, New Orleans drew it. Oh, that. got it. That's true. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but you put the pen to paper. There we go. Thank you guys <laughs> Thank you. so much. <laughs> All right. So we are coming back to Lisa Horton. Do not fret. We will be there tomorrow. Absolutely. So let's go on to the next booth we have over here. We have Sweet Bella. Oh, they're busy talking. We've got somebody in here. Just take a look. Look at all the masking tape. I'm just loving all that masking tape. Just, I'm gonna hold up a couple products. Just look. Isn't that pretty? Just look at all the gorgeousness right here. Just you can see some of it. She's playing with some of the washi tape. We've got lots of lots of little fun goodies over here. This is awesome. Thank you. 
Uh, over here we have Holbein. So Holbein has some wonderful, they have a little powwow going on, so we're just going to do a quick overview. Um, but Holbein has amazing paints. If you've never played with them, they are beautiful, beautiful. So let's just do a quick span as we walk through, so we're not interrupting them. I mean, it's fabulous. They got paints, they've got soft art pastels, colored pencils, watercolors. Right, they were busy over there. Do you have a moment to talk about what Holbein's all about? We're live right now. Is that okay? Fabulous. Well, can you tell us all about you? Uh, Holbein, or the products? It's, yes. a, it's a Japanese manufacturer. We are the sole, menu, sole distributor for Holbein for North America. We're located just outside of Burlington, Vermont. Beautiful. Um, here for the show, we're showcasing all of our products from our water soluble oils to our traditional oils, pastels, watercolors. Washes, acrylics, inks, a little, bit of everything. a little bit of everything. Awesome paint. I love all the products That's here. In a They're nutshell. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, let's keep on moving sure. on. All right. So, just want to give you a span so you guys can kind of see what is happening over here. This is Demo Alley. So, some of the booths are bringing in. And let's just do a quick jaunt through. What do you think? Should we just do a quickie pass through of all the fun stuff that's going on here in Demo Alley? Should I turn that off? Uh, is it causing problems? Is the sound causing? What are they saying? Yeah. So can you hear everything okay? Really? Okay. I, I'm trying to turn the mic on whenever I'm talking with somebody. Yeah. Don't look. I'm checking to see if my mic's on. Yeah, look at that. Okay, I'm on. All right. So it was just when I got too close. Or I think he was talking very, very quietly. So I think, and he kept turning his head, and I was trying to follow him with the mic. I don't know if you caught that, but he was. So I'm fine. All right, I don't need this one on right now, but I might as we're walking around. But let's see. Okay, who we got over here? So now we're going to hit some more companies because they're demoing. So what do we got going on? <gasps> Sensory art. We're filming. Is it cool yeah, to come in and see what this please, is all about? Please. I'm excited. Yeah, you can join. Whoop, I'll go on this side. How about that? This looks like fun. Sorry, I keep keep forgetting my mic is right on my shoulder and I put the bag. So I'm so sorry if you're hearing. <laughs> so what is this all about? Can we just go vicariously through you? Please, absolutely. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So this is Heather. Yeah. Heather, want to give yourself a shout out? Hello. Nice to meet you all. My name's Heather Farmer. I own Bloomington Fine Art Supply based in Bloomington, Indiana. So if you need some art supplies, you got to go check out her shop. It is awesome. She is amazing. You stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so this looks like, oh, sorry. No, that's OK. No, it's, we, got we have like, you know, everywhere. trajectory. Every, have OK, I got to touch one of these because these look fabulous. <gasps> is it air dry clay? Yes. Look at this little, and look at all the yummy colors. Oh my goodness. This is like the therapy one in itself. That's cool. <laughs> so you're making one of these I'm little succulents. I'm making this one right here. We're going to use all so, these colors. I mean, just, so you can blend the colors, beautiful yes. air dry clay. I love this. I love this. I cannot stay and play, but yeah. I take a couple of the little packages yeah. home. Okay. My daughter, I'm going to hold it. All right. Which one do you think? She's a purple girl, so I think I'm going to take her a purple. Do I want to mix them? Uh, I'm going to do that. Like a you have your color. Oh, okay, okay. Or just to have a marble effect. There. It's okay. It depends Shh. what you like more. All right. Whoop. Like it's <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. These are amazing. And the name of the yeah. product is on here, right? Yes. Just touch. And it's O K R O. Octo. O K T O. O K T O. Octo. Where are you based out of? In Ukraine. In Ukraine. Yeah. Oh, Our fabulous. Is in that is fabulous. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. That is fabulous. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love this. Is, it just, oh. It, I can't it, stop. I, can't, I know. You're I just can't. like, I want to play. I want stop. to play. But I got to stop. I got to stop right now. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. All right. Bye, Bye. <laughs> got my little goodies. That's mine. You don't get that in the swag bag. But speaking of swag bags, if you are a glitter or you are a, a silver member of my YouTube channel, as I go around and be able to pick up fun little goodies, and I ask, or it's because they're doing them as demos, I just may not stay into the demo, or companies give me a little fun thing. So for instance, I have an extra mug. So when I get back, I'm gonna be putting together fun little swag and goodie bags for those that are my silver and glitter members from products from the show. So you want to. So down in the information section on YouTube video, you can see become a member. Click on that and that's how you become a member. There you go. Easy enough, right?
That would absolutely help with occupational therapy. Yes. Anything I feel like it, it's a soothing process while you're doing all that stuff. So that's a cool new company that's here that is amazing. So we were just at Makerflow. That's where we did the UV resin. And if you miss any of the videos while we're live, the replays are automatically available. So we just were at uh, Makerflow doing the UV resin. So we're going to just do a quickie drive by on this because they're doing sublimation right now, which is fabulous. Hello. 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 They're working with one of their presses and dealing and doing sublimation on. We're just going to speak in real fast just to show. <laughs> they're doing makeup bags. I love it. Look how glitzy and glammy. Yeah, that's a big reveal. And then we've got some more coasters here. May I have a coaster? Sure. <laughs> they're pretty. They're so. You look at me like, no, you can't have well, one. Why don't you make one? That's, well, that's what we're doing. Because <laughs> I don't have time. Oh, you have time. <laughs> I don't one, have time. Right here. You got a spot. All right. All right. I'll die. They convinced me. It's fine. <laughs> no, I know. No. All right, let's make a coaster. Come on, Aaron makes it, right? I, mean, come on. <laughs> I do doing? have it in my logo. You know how this works. Yes. Right. Center that down. All right. Put this on there. And, then, and is it and then got then a timer on set yep. to go? Right in the middle. Uh, pressure. Hit right start. Now. Countdown begins. Ten. <laughs> no. No longer than that. This is where you speed through the video, right? I love the size of this little guy. Yeah, it's really convenient. It's eating plate, so it's a pool. It's mobile. You can do it. Patches on shirts and stuff. Very, very nice. New small items. All right. And I like the little handle that's on here. It's very cool. Got forty-one seconds. 41 seconds. Right. So, what here. can you tell me about Makerflow in uh, 35 seconds? Well, Makerflow <laughs> is a great supply company. Got all your blanks for sublimation. We've got the Epson printers. We've got the ink that comes with that. Our Makerflow paper has been really awesome. Ah. You'll, you'll see the, the ink release on our paper. So, not much ink left there. And um, yeah, all the blanks and supplies. You can get but you're not just sublimation. You have yeah. other yeah. products as well. So, what else do you we guys support? So laser engraving with the extra laser machine Ooh. now. So we sell those and um, epoxy and UV so resin. We got to play with that earlier. We went over there and did one of the UV resins. It was great. It was really fun. I love the little charms. All right, we got. What? Oh, how much is the way? Does it weigh? How much does it weigh? How heavy is it? Three pounds. Yeah, it's really light. I mean, it was like air. All right, got to come over here. Big reveal. Ready, ready, ready. Ready, ready, steady, ready. That color showing up. Look at that. It's a little toasty. It's not horrible. Yes, so it would be white. That's your own souvenir now. But because we were doing these as a whole, Cheers. we added a little cat. That's why we should. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. I, was doing I did it. <laughs> You're right. It was very quick. Very, very quick. That's pretty cool. I love that little pouch. Fancy, schmancy. <laughs> Thank you. I did. So you had time? I did. He convinced me. Right, he convinced ready? me. I saw her do it. <laughs> Is it okay to come in and film? So what are you doing here? What are you playing with? I love this. Um, this is the collapsible. So it's the best brush cleaner on the market. Very cool. Um, and what company are you? Because people may not know. Paint Puck. Paint Puck. All right, I'm going to pull out my, you guys, can you hear her okay? Or should I put my mic on? Here, we're just going to hold the mic, just to be sure. Wait. So you can put it on. You're going to hook it to yourself if you like. We're live right now. Is oh. Good? Uh, Make sure that people can hear us. It's got a little clip. Just while she's talking, we can be able to hear her. That's all. There okay. We go. It's fancy now. All right. So can you tell us a little bit about Paint Puck and what, why it's so cool? And is this the only version? I'm throwing lots of questions at you. Sure. Well, um, I think that you should try it, okay. and you can really feel it. Um, so basically, Paint Puck is a. This is one product that they have. It's the collapsible, and it is portable. It makes brush cleaning easier and it preserves your brushes for longer. So basically when you're painting, when you're switching between colors, when you clean your brush, flat bottom, um, say in glass or plastic or mesh that's actually metal that's kind of not as good for your brushes, right. these have these little silicone notches. And so it makes cleaning the brush faster so it saves you time. All that time adds up when you're painting. It's better for your brush. Um, it doesn't, it's it's in your helps, yes. Oh, nubbies in there, and there's a the water in there, but there's no nubbies. So this and is then, one version, and this is another version? So this is the rinsable. So the different, it's the same concept. The difference is the collapsible is on the go. So you can collapse it, hook it. So if you're doing plein air paintings, um, it's really nice 
just one more thing that you don't have to store in your bag. You can just clip it. Right. Um, really good. Yeah. And then what, in between brushes, so for me, what I used to do is I used to just leave my brushes like this. That's not good for your brushes. Yeah. yeah and I'm so, curious. absolutely. Yeah. I still, every once in a while, have that, you know, in me. But um, you can just clean them and then hang them. And it's much better for your brushes. When you're Cleaning oh, your different sizes. I just don't absolutely. Like there's and so there's like many options. Ah, because I was like, oh, this is not fitting in here, and then I looked around, and I was like, ooh, look mm -hmm. at that. So I can pop. The oh yeah, brushes. yeah. It's Perfect. it's pretty wonderful. Um, and I'm noticing you're putting paint down here, so it can also act as your palette. You can. It'll act as your palette. You can mix. Um, you could keep your color separated. And so, for instance, with watercolor, you know, watercolor just washes right off. So you can do that to clean it. With acrylic, you have to scrape to clean so this it just dries and peels right off it's really really convenient i think you can kind of like oops. and this <laughs> suctions down so when you're using it you just kind of press it down and it'll oh. help stay better yeah um or if you don't want it to do that for me i like to be able to just turn mm. um and the fact that you hang your brushes upside down you could even if you're completely cleaning your brushes for the day you know with soap and water it's much better to put them upside down to dry because when they don't, the water comes down here. I don't know if you've ever had a brush where the metal starts, starts to loosen or yes, yeah. definitely. And for me, if I'm buying like a $30 brush that I want to preserve and I'm not that good at, you know, you know, it takes the thought process right. out of it. Totally good. Um, right. It helps, you know, preserve that brush that I spent my hard earned money on. So I see another one in a little tiny glass over there. So That's these, this is the original. This is what paint puck. So right. because it's like a little puck. Um, so basically you can just suction it to your glass or whatever you have. And it's the same concept. So it definitely helps clean your brushes um, in a shorter period of time. And it's better for the brushes. So where can somebody find all these different paint pucks between, like as I'm seeing three different versions of these. Where so um, definitely in art stores, but if you want to go to the booth, it's um, five. It's down the 500 yeah. aisle. Well, I'm talking like to my audience who's watching, like if they wanted to purchase one. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we there's online at paint puck, I believe it's paintpuck.com and um, paint Puck has an Instagram. It actually is really great and informative because it shows you a lot of how to use it. It shows artists like me that use it, you know, every day. Um, so you can really get a feel to it for it without actually using it, you right. know, first and online. Cool. And yeah. I'm guessing probably on Amazon too. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything's on. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> What's with the hats? So, the, well, you know, I was kind of experimenting painting on a hat, but this is a paint puck hat, so feel free to take one. You could also use it as a canvas. Uh, um, okay. yeah, if you I like, I'll get one for you. Oop, I'm throwing them. And then there's also stickers. <laughs> the oh, packaging is really cool for anybody that's, I, I was raised by someone, my mom was in the marketing and branding industry. So we would, I'm always sold on packaging and I really like that's how a, clean and simple very, it yeah. looks and you can just try it out. Yeah. So fabulous. yes. I got me stickers. a little pink. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Got me a little pink pack up. Cute. Oh, I'm going to have to get a photo. All right, all right, here we go. You gotta hold the paintbrush, a little paint puck. You can put it on portrait mode. There we go. One, two, three. Cute. I love it. Oh my gosh, the hair, your blue hair looks great with it. <laughs> Styling. Yes. Absolutely styling. I love it. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thanks for chatting. Absolutely. Yeah, if you have any more questions, uh, I'm right here, but also the owner is down at the. Uh, um, right, get my mic back? I guess <laughs> it's cute and fuzzy. It has a little something. Fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Fabulous. All right. Got one for Rhonda too. She gets a hat too. All right. So I like this demo alley because you get a chance to see a lot of different brands. And oh, so these little tiny ones just to show you. Look, look how cute these are. I actually have two or three of these at home. Oh, I you love do? Them. I have the baby ones, yes. Did I do a good job? You did fabulous. All right, awesome. You did fabulous. <laughs> you rocked it. Thank you. All right, so here we have, ooh. So this is another UV resin. Same concept that we were doing before. I love this. And I'm loving this little Lumilite. So instead of having to hold a flashlight, 
it's like a whole, it's like when you put your nails in, which is fabulous. So you can set it in there, heat set it, and it is fast. Or UV set it, not heat set it. UV set it, which is very, very cool. So Alum Light also has all of the resins as well. So this is all the UV resin from there. And just take a look. Look at that. Like that's, they have different colors. So not all UV resin is transparent, so you can see through it. Some of the UV resin, excuse me, are opaque, which means you cannot see through it. And so, prime example. Very cool, right? All right. So over here we have Simon. Hello, we're live. We're going to come in just listen in for a tidbit for a while. And that's just layered up using the six I'm going to go snag my mic over there so people can hear him. Do you mind if I pop my mic here so we can hear yeah, live? Perfect. Yep. Sweet. Thank you. So this is the golden hour color. I really like this because it's a white paste, but it has a colored mica inside of it when you tilt it in the light. So you can put it on top of projects and it won't necessarily cover things up if it's thin enough. So I like to just go in here with my finger, especially on the embossing folders. I'll take a little bit onto my palette here. You guys hear him okay? So I want to make sure. And you want a really thin layer on your finger. So like just like that is perfect. Really super thin because you can always go back for more. But if you have too much, it'll go down into the embossing folder. And I'll just take some and swipe it onto the surface on those tulips. And again, just go back in for more if you need it but a very thin layer, like you can see my finger right through it, and you're just adding a little bit of glitter and shine, but you're not taking away from the color that's already on the surface there. And I'll just go in and do this all throughout. Now we have several different colors of solar paste, so you can go in with whatever color solar paste you want. Like I said, here is that golden hour color, so it's gonna give us a yellowish golden shine, but you could go in with like a green for those leaves too and just add a really beautiful shine all over the project. And what I love so much about this too, because sometimes there's like glitter pens and things like that that are on the market where it's like liquid glitter. But when those dry, sometimes they come off on your fingers and all over your project and all over your recipient's hand. So once this dries, it's completely permanent. It'll be stuck onto your project and no glitter or sparkle will come off on your hand, which I really love about it. And then for the leaves, I'll go in with a little bit of crocodile tears. This is that green color. I just want to show you there's several different colors of it. So this has a like green iridescent mica. I'll tap some onto the surface like this just so I get a really small amount again. And then I can go back onto the leaves and add a little bit of green there. So you can do this with any of the six colors that we have of the solar paste. And it's just a really great topper or embellishment to a project like this. And like I said, the solar paste does have a white base to it. So you do need to apply it really thin like this in order to see through it because if you apply it a little bit thicker, it kind of covers up a project usually. And I'll just go in and finish this off with a little bit of green. All right, so then this takes only a couple of, like 30 seconds to a minute to dry too. I'll speed it along a little bit with the heat tool so you guys can see. But I love when you apply it so thin like that too because the dry time is little to nothing. So if you're applying it really thin, then you can continue on with the rest of your project like this. So this is already pretty much dry. It's a little bit wet right there. All right. Yep, that's all dry now. You can see the mica doesn't come off on your hands afterward. It's not rubbing all over the project. And you can see all of that like amazing sparkle and shine when you sort of tilt it in the light. Cool. Yeah, it's really pretty. Of course, thank you guys. So I love how that looks. Now on the same talk about solar paste, I want to show you how to color your solar paste because I showed how to use it with just plain solar paste now to add on top of your project. But solar paste is a really cool paste because of that white um, factor because you can go in and color it with anything. So I'm going to go in here I'm gonna use a little bit of overheated, which is this orange solar paste. I'll take a little bit out of the jar here. Put it on my surface. And then I'll go in using a little bit of Crown Me ink. 
Now you can use a reinker as well. You just need to make sure that this ink is going to be a translucent dye-based ink. If it is an opaque medium or a paint or any sort of like pigment ink as well, it'll cover it right up. So you need it to be translucent and these are that. So we can go in here with a little bit of purple crown me color. Now usually crown me or this purple would mix with that orange and create an, an absolutely brown color like it's going to mix together and be bad, right? But that's a dye and this is mica inside of here. So since it's a solid and a liquid, they're not going to mix. So I can take this then, mix it right into my ink. And it's going to create this gorgeous purple color then. You feel like you're at cold stone, right? You're like mixing the color. You can it leave really it streaky or you can fully mix it. Yeah, you can okay. leave it like marbled too if you want to. Yeah, I love the color too. It's a really good one. One of my favorites of the ink pads. So I'm going to go in then. And you can see, I don't know if you can see a little bit of orange shine still on here. So you've created a paste now that is a purple colored paste, but it's still got that orange shine to it. So when you put it on your project and you toast it in the light, you're going to see that orange, but you're going to see the purple when you first look at it. So one of the things I love about solar paste it's just how versatile it is like this. So I'm gonna go in with one of my stencils. This one is called Deco Diamonds. It's this really beautiful pattern. I love that purple color. And now I'll take my scraper from the paste tool set and scrape it down so you get a nice smooth effect. Beautiful. You get a nice crisp line with these. What I love about the solar paste too is that it is nice and creamy, but it's not too um, liquidy that it's going to seep underneath your stencil, so it's nice and thick still. And then I'll go in here, just heat set this for a little while. Now another thing I like about solar paste, there's a lot of things I like about it, of course, because it's my own paste, but <laughs> I love that you can heat set it without it bubbling. There's one of the things I went to the chemist, I was like, I'm impatient, this needs to dry, this has got to dry. So you can heat set it without it bubbling, as long as you keep the heat tool moving, you should be good. And it takes about two to three minutes, you can also heat it from the back side, just depending on how thick you applied the paste. Um, if you apply it thinner, like I said, it dries really quite quickly. I like that it stays pliable. Yes, and it's still bendable. Yeah, it doesn't crack on your surface, which is really great, um, so nothing cracks off. But you can see it's not fully dry probably, but there's a little bit of orange shine being tilted in the light. Mm -hmm. And so that shine really shows through once it's a little bit drier and you get that really beautiful like purple paste with that orange look to it. Lost my water bottle. <laughs> it up and poofed up. And then you just want to make sure that when you're using your tools, you're cleaning your tools off once you're all done. And make sure to clean them right away because lunar paste, when it's wet, is still you can clean it off. But once it dries, it's completely permanent on your surface. Um, except for uh, like plastic, it will come off, glass, it will come off. But if your surface is like a paper or canvas or anything like that, it will dry um, and become permanent. So you want to clean it off while it's still wet. Otherwise, your senses will be embellishments. So <laughs> you want to make sure to dry those or clean them off. All right. I stuck that in my own pace there. I failed my <laughs> own test. I failed my test. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to go in and do a little bit of blending with the inks. So do you have new colors? Yeah, new colors. Yeah. Let me show you the new colors. So the new colors are the neons. We have a couple of great neon colors. Yeah. And I'll show you the swatches too. Everybody's loving your too. shirt right now. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, let's see. I'm going to grab them all out here. They're all kind of mixed in. All right, there's seven of them. All right, we got them here now. So there's lots of different colors. We have Hot Mess, which is this bright pink color. There is Mood Ring, which is this kind of purplish fuchsia color. Then we have Tangent, which is this bright orange. Two yellows in the line. We have Yellow Jacket and we also have Voltage. The reason I wanted both is because Voltage is more of a greenish yellow. This is more of a warm yellow. So you can use this with some of the warm tones. And you can use this with a lot more of the greens, blues, and purples. So I love that we included both because they are very different. If you see them here. Yeah. This one's more of a highlighter. This one's more of like an orangey sunshine yellow. So very different when you're using them on your projects. All right. And then we have a Dart Frog which is this great neon green color. And then No Chill, which is this nice kind of icy turquoise blue, which I really like. And then here's the swatches. Now what's really awesome about Lunar Paste, of course, if you know the Lunar Paste, they're really bright metallic colors. And I wanted these to still have mica and kind of metallic shine to them. Because normal neon products don't, they're kind of matte usually. 
So uh, I worked with the chemist to make sure that these still had a little bit of that pearl shine to them. Sometimes the pearl interferes with the neon though, so we had to get it just right. So there's a little bit of shine, but it's not getting rid of any of the neon properties. So you can see they're nice and shiny still, which is great, they got kind of a pearly look to them, but they're still that really great bright color. One thing I like to say too is, Sometimes people get a little bit nervous when they see all of these neons together on a page like this. But when you mix them in with the other colors, like here I use the neons in this background. If you use them with your regular ink colors and your, and your regular paste colors, they mix into the line really well and just add a nice bright pop of color. But it doesn't always have to be just the neon palette where it's you know, super bright and in your face. But I always found that I used the brightest colors the most. So I wanted kind of a, a line or more of a selection of some brighter colors that I can use in my projects. So let me go in and show you guys a project with these neons. I'm gonna go in with the black paper here. All right, here I used the neons earlier to create kind of like a marbled look. Thank you so much. I'm gonna come of by course, and grab yep. art and I snag my mic. Here you go. Thank you. I love the new colors. Thank you so much. They're looking great. Thank All right, you. I gotta grab my bag now. <laughs> All right, all right, let's go down. We got Cassie. Oh, Cassie's one of my roommates. I have amazing, amazing roommates, including Rhonda. But Cassie is one of my roommates, and she's over here. We're going to land on you. So wait, I'm going to put my mic over here so we can hear what you're doing. Is well, if you cool? wait a minute, I'm going to start again with Catherine. So Sweet. you can see from start to finish. Well, let me pop over, and I'll come back. Okay. Sounds good. Change plans. We're going to go see what's going on over here. All right, so what do we have over here? So we have Liquitex. I might be Hello, Hello. Jacomi Film. I think so, yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. Can you just tell us a little bit about what you're playing with and what the product is and what you're doing? I'm painting with the bio-based paint and it's very similar to acrylic, but instead of plastic, um, they use a little bit of plant-based materials. Oh. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's still an acrylic paint, but this is the same consistency and viscosity oh, as, as heavy body, but rather than using kind of petrochemical based products, 50% of what's used in here is from plant based products. That is fabulous. So it's kind of on our journey in the kind of world of sustainability, right? And it gives you everything you need the quality is the same, the sheen, the finish, everything's the same, but you're just making a more sustainable choice as an artist. I love that more companies are going in that direction yeah. that is fabulous and you already have it a wonderful wonderful product so i love that you're going this direction yeah we are super proud of it super proud of it. very cool yeah. and how many colors does it come in 40 colors two sizes 75 mil and 500 mil have you got any other bigger pots no we've got and meat and four mediums yeah so this is like these are these are mock-ups right we're in the production stage factories churning it out right now each one of these has got a little hand-painted strip on the front of it, so, so you, you can, can see, really see it. it. We went for pots, which is kind of a bit different. So what was the one I was holding up over there? So this is heavy body. That's our traditional oh, okay. paint. Traditional, okay. traditional one that's, kind of, up. Sorry, that's kind of out there. Um, this is the new product that's going to be launching kind of summertime. Okay. In a pot, a bit different. Really, really choiceful for the pot, because actually what we heard in all the research we did is people that are making more sustainable choices want to be able to have an end of life for something, right? These, as great as the tubes are, you can never recycle them because they're contaminated. Got you put it, it in a pot, you can clean the pot out, you can use the pot to make custom colours, or you can just recycle it. So, See, look at that. Or you can put other little bits and bobs in there. Or you can put other little bits and bobs in there, absolutely. See? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> you like, all the little, like, little things that you want to keep collect just, along the way. Yeah, right? whatever you want to do. Yeah. Thank you so all much, right, no I appreciate it. All right, so this is how I'm uh, surviving today. <laughs> and so I still have yet to find my water bottle. It has vanished. Yeah, unless we stuck it in Rhonda's backpack, but I think I was carrying it and I don't know where it went. So I don't know what's going on. Hello. We're filming live. Is it okay to come in? Absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about, this just looks so cool. I don't know what's happening over here, but okay. it's looking pretty amazing. So I've been treating Japanese paper with konyaku starch. Konyaku is a tuberous root called devil's tongue root. And the starch is something they've used traditionally in Japan to treat paper to make it wind resistant and abrasion resistant. They used to make clothing out of paper in Japan. Oh, wow. um, so the, the treatment has all kinds of art potential. Um, you can apply it to the paper and crumple it so that it has uh, a bit of stretch. These two papers, this is untreated, this one is treated here. Um, it pulls together, but that 
crumpling on there has gives it a little bit of stretch because paper doesn't technically stretch. Got it. Um, so it makes it malleable so that you can do sculptural things with it. So this is the powder that she's talking about and you're mixing it with water I'm guessing? Just mixing it with water. And what's cup, the ratio? One cup water to a half teaspoon gives oh. you something that's thick like this. So this is mixed oh, up wow. already. Um, it takes several hours for it to totally gel. I started mixing this one at 10 o'clock and it's already starting to get quite thick but there's still a lot of granules in it, so that one needs to wait for a while. And you just paint it on the paper? Just brushing it onto the paper, and then once the paper has um, dried a little bit, we then crumple the paper. Um, this is cool. Like, this has got some really cool, like, think about art journals and just it's lots really of really cool. It's a really excellent way to toughen up a paper to use as a cover for a journal. Um, this is a notebook that a former colleague of mine, Mary Jane Varro, made. She dyed the paper. Um, it was a COSO-based paper with fiber-reactive dyes, and then she treated it with cognacu starch. And it made a very tough kind of leather-like consistency. So it's a really nice sort of um, malleable but strong. Uh, it keeps the paper from getting fluffy, etc. Very, very so cool. So I will do a quick... Yeah, I'd love to see it. It's very quick. simple. How long does it take to dry once you've applied it? It depends on the weather. Um, I'm finding that here in New Orleans, it's quite humid, so yeah. it takes a lot <laughs> we longer. We were all realizing after the storm you know. last night how humid it is today. Yeah, Ooh. so normally, it depends on how heavy the paper is, but sometimes it takes as little as an hour to dry. Um, in Toronto, where I'm from, in the wintertime in particular, it's very dry and it doesn't take very long at all. Um, so it really depends on the conditions and how heavy the paper is. And here, you can see quite easily where I've applied it. This is a heavier paper called Noriki Kozo. Um, it's 80% Kozo fiber, 20% wood pulp. Um, it's but if you just did regular cardstock, would it still work? It would still work, yeah. Okay. Um, your end product is only as good as the paper you start with, so if you're doing something that has short fiber, it might fall apart when you need it. This is actually one of our cardstocks from the Japanese paper place called Linen Lightweight. It's actually not quite a cardstock. But this is the same paper with the um, cognac who applied and then crumpled. And that's, again, very leather-like, I think. Very leather-like. And it has a lot of sculptural potential. Oh, yeah. Potential. That's cool. So and then you just let this dry? Or do you do both sides? Uh, this one I will do both sides. You can see it hasn't actually gone through um, to the back side. So it depends on the paper. The heavier the sheet, um, the more you'd like want to apply. So both sides is not a bad idea. I then let it dry until it's no longer sticky. Um, I'll finish applying this, but I have another sheet over here that I applied this to a little while ago. Um, so it's dry enough, and I'll show you how I come to it. I like the speediness of, hey, look, here it is, and then, oh, it's done. It's like a capri show, right? Fabulous. I did a little bit of planning ahead of this. I did. Okay, so here, this is quite sticky um, and wet, but I can handle it. It's oh, a strong yeah, it's paper. Yeah. yeah, it's non toxic. It doesn't um, smell at and all. It's water soluble. So I'm just going to lay this out over here. This sheet, this is a different color um, of the same kind of paper, but I applied the cognac to both sides of this a little while ago, um, half an hour ago, and it's now just damp, it's no longer sticky, and I'm just going to take it and crumple it up. What if you didn't crumple it? What if you just let it dry flat? Would if you let it dry flat, it, it still has the same qualities of abrasion resistance. Um, it doesn't have the stretch as you would um, when you crumple it. Okay. You can use it as a sized paper then. A lot of Japanese papers don't have sizing in them. So you can just brush it on as a sizing. So that's totally fair um, to do. So this paper here, uh, I treated before I left Toronto. It's called Kizuki Somegami, and it's 100% Kozo. And I treated it, and then I was creping it um, to get a different kind of texture on it. So you can actually crumple it after it's dried, or you can leave it and use it like this. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate thank you it. For by. All things cool. I never even knew this stuff existed. And how many different kinds of paper, like Japanese paper? It's a whole other world for me. I love it. <laughs> All right. So let's go back, let's see where Cassie's at with her demo, and then we have a very special treat. We got a, we're gonna be doing something with physics. Because they're gonna be starting their, that new tool that you, everybody's been asking me about. So let's see what Cassie's up to. All right, so I'm gonna bring the camera around and you just, or the mic around. And then stamping onto this 
wet media journal art, and then we make a fun little two-layer um, bookmark out of it. So the, the sense of being a mask, we peel it off after, and it creates this fun little pattern. So that's what we're doing today. If you want to come back and make one of them when we have some open space, we'd love to have you. Yeah, nice to meet you. So I just put my mic there. Is that cool? Okay. Is that in sure. your way? That's fine. All, All right. right. Thank, Thank you so water. much. All mm -hmm. right. So here's Cassie, and she's over here <laughs> with graphics and playing. And why don't you just tell us what you're, what you're kind of playing with, what you're doing? Yeah. So today we're making some fun uh, bookworks using, we've got gray and black uh, Durabrite, and those are the base of the bookmarks. And then we have some clear uh, wet media Duralar. And this is a really fantastic product. It looks just like plain old acetate, but it's got a special coating on it. So you can use it for, with any medium that you can think of, really. Like you can use it with watercolor, with acrylics, with um, markers, with anything. And it's really fantastic. We're using it today with Stays on Ink, and we've got some fun and pretty um, stamps here that were donated by Hero Arts. And so we just stamp it with some stays on, so we add a fun little uh, texture layer on the top of our bookmarks. So, oh, yeah, sorry. Let me get this. There you go, dear. You're ready. So now you're gonna punch a hole, put them together. Does it go up or down? Whatever. What, okay. what, yeah. No rules. And then it's just playing and having fun. Right? Yeah. So we're just um, putting putting the frisket film down onto the Durabrite, wherever you want, just to create some fun little shapes. And I think I have one more here somewhere. Oh, I need to cut one. So I'm just using this frisket film. I'm just cutting out with scissors, but you can use it with a die cutting machine or like electronic or, you know, just like a big shot or something. Um, if you want a very specific shape or word or something like that. But we're just doing fun wonky shapes here. We're just having a, having a blast. And you just peel it apart. It's got a sticky back on it. And so then you just have the film and you stick it down on your surface and you're ready to go. So now we're gonna pick two colors of paint, okay? So I'll do teal and magenta. And these are donated from Golden. They are fluid acrylics, really great paints. Yep. Oh, thank you, Anita, for getting it on. <laughs> You're amazing. Okay, so now we're going to use the, you picked your colors. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would use teal first. Okay. All right, so we're just going to put a little teal, and I might even just use what I have here. And you're going to cover your whole, um, your whole bookmark with your teal paint. And you've got, yeah, you've got sponges here. Oh, you got one. Okay, good. So just going to cover this whole thing. So this frisket film now is going to act as a mask. So later when this paint is dry and we peel it off, it's going to leave, we're going to see that gray Durabrite showing through and it will have created a fun mask for us. So you can, you can create really fun, um, just funky backgrounds. Are you good? Let's see. Good. All right. I want to see it. Okay, so then the next step is to. Oh, it looks right, great. It looks like Very pretty. That looks fantastic. Yeah, that is fun, Cassie. Thank you. Very You're much. welcome. It's lovely to That's see awesome. you. Lovely. Okay, uh, so now you need to cut more shapes because we're doing two layers. Okay. All right. You need more film. Yep. 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 We've got plenty. You're kind of going the same route. She made little holes in her circles, but you're doing full circles. Plain circles, yep. Plain circles. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. There you go, dear. Did you let it dry before you do the next step, or we're just... Yeah, so before you put more frisket film down on here, this layer has to be dry. Got it. Uh, and then we'll put another layer of frisket, different shapes. You can overlap. You don't have to. And then we're going to put... I'm using this Quinn Magenta, but you can use any color you want. Do the, do the next layer of color, and then when that's dry, you peel all of the frisket film off to reveal, you know, what we have here. Um, and you have all the fun layers. So we have all the fun layers. And then I just doodle a little bit. I use some of these Marvel Uchida deco color markers uh, to do some, some doodling. And then, again, we stamp the um, wet media journal art with the pattern. And Very that's cool. it. Yeah. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm steal my mic back. Sure. <laughs> See you later. Thanks. Later tonight. To be right. Okay.
Cool. All right, we are going to be heading out. Thank you, thank you. Let's go check out the new Sizzix tool. So they were switching out between Catherine Cooler and then they were flipping in. So I believe we're ready. Let's go find it. Oh, my bag. I got to not forget. Oh, it's up there. Ha ha, my bag. This is how I lost my water bottle. <laughs> All right. It's like you got to walk through the maze to get there, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Meander our way through. Okay. All right. Here we go. She's already got a little group around her, so we're going to sneak in. Hello! Hi! I'm back! How are you? So everybody has been asking about this amazing tool. I'm going to put this over here okay. so people can hear us. Okay. Is that cool? That's, yeah, that's All fine. Right. A little bit closer. Okay. So, Tell us what you are playing with right now, what it's called, and all of it. Okay. <laughs> so we have our stencil and stamp tool that came out already, so it's on the market. This is what it looks like, and it has a large stamp platform lid right here, which is great for those larger stamps, and when you want to have that perfect precision with the hinge, you can get that perfect precision every time. But we want to give people the ability to create patterns and really nice, beautiful, concentric wreaths. So that's where the stamp and spin comes in. This is the new accessory for the stencil and stamp tool. It's coming out May 1st, so very soon. And you just pulled that right out. Yeah, it, it pops in and out of the hinge really easily. It's an amazing tool to create all of these beautiful patterns and different types of wreaths right here, which you are welcome to show to everyone. <laughs> we just did. So I was just explaining to these lovely folks right here that this is broken down into eight pie slices, essentially. They're 45 degrees. And then within the pie slices, you'll see that there's these lovely rounded marks. Those are just to act as guide marks to allow you to know where to place your stamp if you're creating the wreath. So the smaller the stamp, you're going to be closer to the middle here, or you can, you know, put it further out if you want, and you might just have to stamp it more. But this one, I don't want to go over the edge because I didn't want my stamps to touch. If I wanted my stamps to touch, I'd move it down a little bit more so I'd have a little bit of an overlap. But right here, I just want to keep it so that it does the perfect circle around. So you have this beautiful wheel. You place your stamp. Yeah, I did. It's double plastic right here, so you don't even have to really push down very hard to get that perfect image. But let's say it didn't stamp perfectly the first time, I would just ink again, and because I have that perfect precision with the hinge, I can go back. And then all I'm gonna do is click my wheel towards me. You can do it either way, but I like to say do it towards you so you know which direction you're going. And then I'm just gonna do that same thing again. So ink stamp twist <laughs> so then you can either go towards you or away yeah from you can you. go I, I clockwise like <laughs> i know because you figure at least then you know which direction you're going right 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 but in a matter of minutes you can have a beautiful yeah it clicks in it place. clicks it into goes, place you can, yeah. you can feel it you can kind of hear it go ding. Yeah. Yeah, does she have the mic? Do you mind if we pop this on your... Yeah, sure. Your, all right, yeah. She, I had it on the table. Everybody Let's knows see. I have the mic now. There's a little, there you go. They're like, does she have the mic? We can't hear her. Hi, testing. One, two, three. <laughs> are we better? Are we better? Can you hear me now? There we go. Let's see. It's probably going to fall off, but we're going to we're gonna make the best of this. <laughs> so, you're just going to... I don't want to touch you, but it does clip. It does have a little it, it. I got it right here. There we go. Just wanting to go different directions. Okay. So, I believe it's $39.99 or $34.99. Creative marketing over here. <laughs> so, I've got this wreath, but let's say I want to add another one on. I'm just going to peel my stamp off real quick. And I'm going to grab, let's see, I want to grab a flower. And let's say I wanted to go in. Right here to fill in that white space. So once you, if you're wanting to create like a really full pattern, like say something like this, or even like these, 
it's all about finding the white space. Because once you get that initial one, then you're going to go and lay your stamp in. And then you use your lid to then be able to align it. Because again, it's the wheel. So at that point, you don't have to worry about the guide marks. You just really need them for that initial one. Or if you're going to do another circle all the way around, you would use those guides again. But if you're wanting to create your own wreath, your own kind of pattern, you can actually just put it on the white space and fill it in and build out a shape or design that you like. Now, we were talking about this because we got to play with these when I was taking some of the classes. And some people had it so that they're opening it to the side, but you could flip it to the other side if you were righty or lefty. Yes. And then some people had it faced where they were lifting up away from them. Yeah. So I... That's the beauty of this tool is it really, because there's no edges to it, you can work with it, whether you're left-handed or right-handed. It has no edges, which means you can also work with bigger projects, which I think is great, especially for scrapbookers, if they wanted to do something bigger on the back of a mixed media page or anything like that. Or if you're working on like gift wrap, all you have to do is just keep moving the gift wrap along and you can stamp. Now this also has the ability to create patterns and the difference between that is you have your lines here for your 45 degrees but then you have these hash marks in here that create 90 degree triangles and that's how you build your patterns so you would work within here click twice instead of once that that way you can repeat a pattern around in quadrants so they're really easy to build out um, and Honestly, I've had so much fun with this. We have had a lot of really great feedback from people. It's been wonderful. It's Everybody in the class was just like, this feels so much fun. Yes. It's almost like your stamping just got rejuvenated and it gave it a whole new life. Yes. And the thing is, is it's really an intuitive tool. You can see it's very easy to use. The most complicated part of it is just figuring out placement. And I've been telling everyone, it took me some playing around with it to figure out what I did right, what I did wrong grab some, you know, tissue paper, some computer paper, play around with it before you actually like start making on your projects because you're going to find after a few uses that you're like, oh, if I want them to touch, I just need to move it a little bit further down. Oh, I don't want them to touch, I just need to move it a little further up. And believe me, I made plenty of mistakes. <laughs> so that's part of the fun. And then you might find a cool technique, you're like, ooh, I hadn't thought of that. Yes. And like, I think honestly, the the pattern was a happy accident. We weren't thinking about that. We were just like, oh, that looks pretty Reese. And then we started playing with it. We we're like, wait, you can do full patterns with this. Yeah. So, yes. So I, I like to work one stamp at a time for like bigger stamps because I find that I want to get that placement right. But then when I'm going in, say on something like this, I did my butterflies first. And then I went and laid everything else in and stamped all the rest at once. So you can do multiple stamps at once. I personally find sometimes the stamps have a little bit of a ridge, so I can't get it as close as I want to. So then I'll do those ones separately. But I like to do the big ones first because I feel like sometimes they're a little bit more intricate and you, you want to get a nice clean impression. So whereas with smaller stamps, you could load this up and stamp, you know, 10 little ones at a time if you wanted to. Are you doing it from sight, like I want to hear it and then you're moving it around, or are you doing it mathematically? Oh, I'm doing it four, so I need to go here and here. So it really depends on, if I'm doing a wreath, it goes around eight times. So like this, I know I'm working with smaller stamps, I'm gonna click eight times. But if I'm working with a larger stamp, I might, I might need to click twice, but I'm only gonna stamp four times. So that's kind of where it becomes that intuitive part where you're gonna play with it to learn, but you feel the click. It clicks yeah, into place, it locked. locks really <laughs> easily. And then I was just saying, you know, you don't wanna, this has the slightest wiggle to it. So you want to make sure when you're stamping that you like what you have before you move on to your next section because you can't just go in again and stamp around because you might run the risk of it double stamping at that point. Right, right, right. But it really, so if I wanted to go in and we have these lovely botanical stamps that are coming out at the same time um, by Lisa Jones and they're all kind of meant to work together. So you've got butterflies, We've got these beautiful botanical fruits. So I could like mix and match my sets, but like I've got two here now. It's all about filling that white space in. 
So you can make this as wide as you want it to or as tiny as you want it to. It all depends on the placement of your stamps. So I have found I this is an 8-inch wheel, so you're obviously limited in the width of what you can do. But I have been able to create, I believe it's up to 7 inches for the patterns. Um, you can see these go pretty far out. So this is a eight and a quarter piece of paper. So you can get it off. It'll fall off the edge a little bit and you might have to press, you know, the stamp down on just the outside edge. But I was able to get them to go pretty wide. So not a full eight and a half or an eight by eight, but definitely like six and a half um, by six and a half or seven by seven. Like I've been able to to get to about this size, which I believe this is a little bit bigger than six inches. Did you ask the tape thing? No. Okay. I'm getting ready to. So what is cool about the mat of this particular stamping platform? So our mat right here, and this is replaceable and reusable. Um, you guys hear that? <laughs> Did you hear that? It lasts for a long time. And it lasts time. a really long time. So this is our sticky grid sheet. This is size A4. It fits perfectly on the base of the tool. And when you get the actual initial tool, you get one in your kit with it. Um, and you lay it down. It has the grid system, so you can kind of use that for alignment and making sure that things are, you know, your paper's lined up where you want it to be. It's nice and straight. And then you can lay it down. It's a low tack paper, so it's you know something similar to like a washi tape, like a really mild washi tape. So it really holds it in place, but it does last a long time, depending on how much you're using it. You know, like I've done one where I've had it for six months, and then there's been ones where I'm like making like crazy, then doing batch making, and that might not last as long because it is a low tack. But they come in replacement packs of five. But I'm telling you, those replacement packs will last you like a year. <laughs> So you you do get a lot of longevity out of them, which is great for, especially when you're doing stamping and stuff, you want that to last a while. Is there a little bit of a give? So when you're stamping into it, it's not like on a hard surface, you know, like you want to have that little bit. Yes. Okay, yeah. So we have on the bottom the foam so that you have that nice firm kind of element there so that you get a nice clean impression. I will say with any of the tools, especially these fine line stamps, you really do not need to push very hard because if you push too hard, then they kind of start to push out and smudge a bit. Um, so I always tell everyone just, you know, light presses and then pull it up. You learn, you learn your own strength. Like I don't, I'm a little bit heavy handed. <laughs> so if I push, like it's going to push that stamp to its max. But then you have other people where they're not pushing hard enough and right. you might need to do a couple of impressions. But it really does, you can see it does not push down. It doesn't move. I, this tool sits at my desk every day. So besides the stamping platform and the wheel, yes. what else can it do? It is also a stencil tool, which is amazing. Now, let me see if I have my stencils right here. I don't think I do, but I can explain this to you. So it's this is like, it's not just the two things. No, Wait, it, it does, does more. <laughs> does so much more. And this is a tool that we'll continue to build more programs around. We'll be doing way more with it in the coming months and years. So it's an investment piece for sure, but it is a tool that has a lot of different elements to it, which is really nice. So this is our stencil adapter. It's a lovely little mint color, so you won't lose it. But what's great about this is we have these two little holes that act as the storage for it. So you oh, don't have to worry when you're I never going noticed to that. Oh, yeah. Man, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you are, you know, obviously some craft rooms you don't have a lot of space. So now you can store it all together like this if you wanted to. And then you can just add this right in the front yeah, and just really put nice it all together. Slim. Can you turn it sideways? Yes. So it's very slim, it's very low slim. profile. Yeah. And I actually keep this in um, at my desk in like a, fi a file folder organizer. It slides right in with my paper because I have I use a lot of our yeah, our smooth cardstock. Our white smooth cardstock is like heavier, so it's great with mixed media. It's great with stamping and watercoloring. It holds the mediums really well. So I'll usually put a pack of those in front of this. We're saying I need a bigger craft room. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. I have a secret closet at my house that my family doesn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody needs know. to know. Nobody needs to know. <laughs> so when you're stenciling, you do actually don't need your stamp platform. So you're just going to put that off to, not the platform, the lid, sorry. So what are all the little holes? Yes. You're getting there. I yeah. No, asking, you're fine. I'm you're fine. You've actually got great questions. <laughs> just don't want to ink my hand, so I'm going to move that totally off to the side. That. 
So when we came out with this, we have stencils that have holes in them. I don't have any right here at this moment, but I'll explain how this works. So the stencils have the holes at the top. They attach right here because we offer a lot of layering stencils. So we wanted you to be able to place this on the hinge. So these, why it's called an adapter is so that you can move your stencils wherever you want on your project. So your stencil would be here, attached here on these two little pegs, and then you can move it up, down. You can also put them here. These are a little bit shorter. I use them on here. It's not intended to be done that way, but you can if you want to. Um, just bear in mind, you might need to tape something down just to hold the stencil in place. Because if you lose this and you want a stencil still, you can. <laughs> um, so this particular one, I would have my stencil, I would do my lovely first layer, I'd peel it off, then put it my second stencil on, and I would know that it's gonna register perfectly that image on the layering element. We also have, dun da da da, I do have these. <laughs> Um, we have converters, so, so you can you use like, you anybody's stencils. Fabulous. We all have our own stencils that we love, 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 yes, love, but we're same. loving this system and we're like, oh, yes. Do do? So with this one, you get 10 in a pack, and the idea is that you get these little plastic pieces. They have a piece of tape right here, so they're removable. If you've got layering stencils, we tell you basically once you've put them on, just leave them on because yeah. you're going to have to realign them again, but these fit onto here so that you can then use anybody else's stencils. I also like the idea that now that it's got the little tabs, uh, you can put a clip on them and that's a great way to store them. Yes, yes, absolutely. And what's amazing about this is you feel like an artist by the time you're done. I, I love to draw, I'm not an artist in that regard. And so when I used, first started using the stencils and like playing around with like backgrounds and images and things like that, I would pull it away when I was done with layer four. And I'm like, I did that in like five minutes. <laughs> so it really, this tool is so much fun. Do you, it makes you feel like an artist. It makes you feel like a creative and it's easy to use. It's not complicated whatsoever. We have lots of video content out there to support. And I know Aaron has done <laughs> content for us and stuff. So there's always support for it. There's Lots more to come for it, I will say. We just came out with stencils that you can stencil and then emboss. So the, it's like we're constantly evolving the technology around the stuff we're doing with this too. What if we lost that piece? Can I just pick up just this piece again? That I'm not sure. Sales will be able to answer that one. <laughs> you were so good with another question. I no, believe, I, I don't believe right now that this one is sold separately, but I don't quote me on it. Okay. It may be someday. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe something for the future. Future. To think about. Yes. Yeah. Well, and I think that's or because it might break or crack. Like you. A hundred percent. You dropped it and you stepped on it. That's. Ah, you know what? That's a great question for me to take back from the yeah. show. <laughs> Gotta get out. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And now yes. remind us the name of the system. So you have the stencil and stamp tool. Comes with your stamp lid, your platform piece, one sticky grid sheet and the stencil adapter. Oh, so that comes with that. This That's is all, all one cohesive together. little set. Ah, so then can, we'll yeah. have the this tool, the stamp and spin, will be sold separately. This is coming out May 1st. This tool is already available. And then you can buy replacement sticky grid sheets in packs of five already, and you can buy the universal stencil converters in packs of 10. Well, thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, I'm going to pass the camera back to Rhonda. She took a tiny, tiny break. And I'm going to steal my mic away from you again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now you guys are stuck with me the rest of the day. <laughs> I'll let thank you, you so much. It's all yours. All yours. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. I love that tool. That is the best tool. Uh, it's a game changer in so many ways because it's got so many different things that you can do. Turn the mic off. It's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Unfortunately, like how much time do we have left? I have my timekeeper. Rhonda is my most amazing timekeeper. We have one minute, so we've got to wrap up. I am going to be going to demo, but while I'm demoing over at the Crafters Workshop, we're going to be doing a booth tour and a little demo of some of the fun products that are coming out with Crafters Workshop this year. So stay tuned. Another live with Crafters Workshop exclusive video right here, just about them. 
only in a few minutes. Within the next 30 minutes or so, we'll be live there. All right, thank you guys so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell button. All that fun stuff, you guys know that. Smash that stuff, you know, the, the normal YouTube stuff. And don't forget, we have lots of fun goodies that we are picking up or being given throughout the entire show. So if you would like to get a swag bag, please make sure that you become a YouTube member, either my silver or my glitter member, and I'll be sending you a fun swag bag, goodie bag from Creativation. So bye everybody for now, we will be back. I know we haven't gotten to every single booth, but there's more videos to come today and a ton more content coming tomorrow, including Lisa Horton. I'm not forgetting her, don't worry. She's on the schedule. We have a set time with her. So bye everybody. We good?